Rangers of Detroit, Antoine De La Mota Cadillac. A Frenchman arrived on the river bank of what we now know as Detroit. He built a fort there. The French had already been started some settlements in what we now know as Canada. They were attempting to find what is now known as the Northwest Passage. Remember that Columbus, Christopher Columbus, was sent by the Spanish. He was attempting to find a way to the Indies by going west. But he crashed in the Caribbean thinking he was in India. We named the people Indians. And because of Columbus being, Columbus being lost, we got Indians in America, uh, and we got Indians in India. Instead of just saying, no, it, Columbus was lost, this, this man didn't know where he was going. set up some settlements in Canada and in 1701 they built the first settlement on the riverfront and they was named Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. Alright? And of course, it was right on the riverbank. They built a fort. You know, a wooded, a wooden barricaded fort. And they began to trade with the Native Americans, mainly for fur. So the fur trade begins in Detroit. They had already done, been doing it in Canada, but now they're beginning it in what they call Detroit. The French called it Detroit. And of course, they corrupted the pronunciation of the Ojibwe people to Chippewa. That's good. So Chippewa and Ojibwe, that's the same people. But it's the Chippewa, the European corruption of their real name, Ojibwe. Okay. So they begin to trade. Of course, the most abundant animal with fur is the beaver. So beaver fur becomes the most abundant fur right here, right in this area. But they also trade meat, ermine, raccoon, rabbit, fox, all of those other animals with fur. But beaver being the most abundant becomes the main fur trade. And of course, what they're trading to the Native Americans are um, um, metal items like iron, cotton, and pans, rope, liquor, um, and other items that, from Europe that the Native Americans don't already have. And eventually, there becomes a trade addiction. The Native Americans become like they need these things. They're now dependent on these things, and so the Europeans can take them away and use them as tools to manipulate the Native Americans. And used as a divide and conquer technique. Same thing they did in Africa. Same thing they did in Asia. Same thing they did in South America. So they do that here in Detroit.
So they do that here in Detroit. So from 1701 to the 1760s, this was a French settlement. It started as a fort on the river, and the fort grows and grows all the way to that street right there. That becomes the limit of how far the fort goes, and the name of that street is Fort Street. The reason it's Fort, the name of it is Fort Street, is that's the boundary of the fort. The fort came that far. They kept adding more to it, more to it, until it got that far. In the 1750s, a war between the French and the British occurred. It's called the French and Indian War in America. But everywhere else in the world, it's called the Seven Years War. It's the same war. The British named the war French and Indians because that's who they were fighting. They were fighting the French and the Indians. The Native Americans generally would ally more, mostly ally with the European group they came in contact with first. So they came in contact with the French prior to coming in contact with the British. So they allied more of an ally with the French than the British. So it was called the French and Indian War. The British win. From the British perspective. Yes, from the British perspective. That's why it's called that. So the British win and they become, they take over this area. As well as most of Canada. They take most of Canada from the French. And we took it from the Native Americans. And they take this settlement from the French who took it from the Native Americans. Uh, and other places in the world they took too. There are other places in Asia that they took from um, the French. And, um, but still the French become the main residents of it. They're still, the, they're still the main people living here. Even though the British have political control, they're not the primary residents. Some British do settle here, but not uh, they don't outnumber the French. But I understand that this cannon has some historical history behind it. I had looked it up, and if you if you look up the War of 1812 and the French and Indian War with with Chief Tecumski and Chief Pontiac. It has a lot of uh, historical roots with that and Fort Detroit. Yes, this used to be a fort, Detroit. You ever wonder why it was called Frank Fort? You turn it around and it becomes Fort Frank. Ha! But I just wanted to personally get up close and personal with the cannon before they take it back. Um, but so many memories with this cannon over the years as playing in Parkside as a child. And didn't really know the, uh, the true history and the significance of the cannon um, until I got older and started getting involved with the Parkside Past, Present, and Future Committee with the picnics and uh, community events. And by conducting our social media page and researching and doing more and um, knowing that it has historical roots that that goes all the way back wow to the 1700s 1800s and the 19 the early 1900s and even though uh, it says uh, it was made by um, a Frenchman um, that's just over in Canada. That's just over a skip hop and a jump from us. But just knowing that this area here um, back then used to be fort, a fort territory where they where merchants would come and do their trades at the forts and the ports and stuff um, between um, Canadians and Michiganders. Um, but just historical roots. I just wanted to touch bank uh, and touch this and say I'm glad and honored to be a part of the Parkside community and this historical monument. I'm sad to see it go, but at the same time, a uh, bittersweet where I know that it will go um, not just up for storage, but hopefully um, they'll take know better kid a better um, job we could have uh, formed a committee um, just for our military um, cannon to take care of it to have um, I remember a time when they used to have um, uh, 
a flower a flower bin out here to beautify it and um you know put some love on it and bring it to life but this is very very historical um thing right here and i just wanted to get up close and personal for um with it um before the u.s united states army come and confiscate it <laughs> and take their so-called unquote property back This is Frankfurt Court. Uh, we would, uh, you stayed on this side here. Yeah, we stayed like probably the third tree back, the second tree back. It does, oh, our tree died. It, well, I won't say died. <laughs> it looked, it was the broken branches, I should say. Like this, right there. And this was the main road to get from Frankfurt to the end of the other section of mm -hmm. Parkside. Memories. And that convalescent fact, home fact, been there forever. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we first moved here, we moved on Frankfurt Court. Oh, wow. And the wreck was like right here and then the garden pool. Oh, I wish we could have preserved the, that. The, 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 if you follow the fence line, All into, right. <laughs> into the pool. So right. That fence line really. Parkside community and beyond the borders, forts and courts.
Uh oh. No, you're okay. One of the trails, the most important trail in the Underground Railroad going to Canada is this one. It's called the Michigan Central Trail. It's really an old Indian trail that black people follow. And now you know it is I-94.